Well, hey everybody, my name is Tom Ward and I'm excited to welcome you back to day six of 23 Days with God. Today we're gonna to be talking about the self-sufficiency of God, but before we do so, let's take a few moments to prepare our hearts and minds by reading from God's word. Well, as I mentioned a moment ago, today as we continue in this series studying the attributes of God, we're going to be talking about the self-sufficiency of God. I think in a lot of ways, this idea of being self-sufficient is somewhat prominent in our current culture, right? I think we see this played out with inspirational posts all over social media, saying things like, you've got this, and you are enough, and you can do it. All these things trying to convince us that we're really strong enough on our own to do whatever it is that we really want to do. I see this play out quite a bit in my home life. You may know that I have a one and a half year old daughter at home. Her name is Raylan. And oftentimes I notice in her this desire to be self-sufficient, right? To tr try to do things on her own, to climb up the stairs, to open up a snack bag, to open a door, to try to do all these different things all by herself. And even though she really wants to be Miss Independent, I think there's something in her that recognizes that she just can't really do some of the things all on her own. And so she pauses and she asks for help. Right? She, gets, she asks to, to be picked up or for me to help her open the door or open a snack or something like that. And I think this happens for all of us throughout different stages of life. Right? We fall into this trap where we think that we're in control of everything in our lives and that we can do it all on our own only to realize that we really can't, that we aren't self-sufficient. But yet we know that we do serve a God who is. And so what does it mean then that God is self-sufficient? Well, I think we see this played out really all throughout the story of the Bible, all throughout Scripture, including in the very first page. Here's what it says in Genesis 1, 1. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We see here that God made everything and everything belongs to him. And Paul expands on this thought further in Colossians chapter 1. He says, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He's before all things, and in him all things hold together. See, God created everything. He sustains everything. Everything is held together by him, but yet he doesn't need anything. He's independent of everything that we see and that we know in the world. He doesn't need anything to exist in order for him to be fulfilled or to find joy or to find purpose. See, all satisfaction, all sufficiency, God has in himself. Paul talks about this in Acts 17. He says, The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. See, again, we see that God made everything and that he doesn't need us, but that we need him. A.W. Tozer puts it like this in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy. He says, whatever God is and all that God is, he is in himself. All life is in and from God. So if all that is true, then what does that really mean for us? Why is an important truth like this something important for us to dwell on? Well, let me share a couple quick thoughts with you today. First, I think it's really important to recognize that God is self-sufficient because really that means that your worth to God is not dependent on his need of you. You see, if God wasn't self-sufficient, that means that he would be looking to get his needs met in relationships with us, just like oftentimes we do with other people. I think sometimes both in helpful and probably sometimes in maybe not so helpful ways. But since God is self-sufficient, that means that your worth, your value, your identity, it's not based on what you have done or what f God needs from you, but rather God determined your worth as a child of God when he created you in his image, as we see near the end of Genesis chapter 1. Second, I think it's important that we recognize that God is self-sufficient because that means that the gospel is dependent on a God who is not dependent on you. You see, if our salvation is based on us and what we can offer, well, I think we all know that's probably not going to end very well for us, is it? Because we're all sinful people. But listen to the words that Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2. He says that we are dead in our sins, but God, being rich in mercy, 
because of the great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. You see, the self-sufficient God who is independent of needs and who created everything entered into a situation in which we were hopeless and he saved us by his grace. The gospel is dependent on a God who is not dependent on you. And yet, despite the fact that God needs no one, when faith is present, he still actively chooses to work through anyone. You know, I think in a lot of ways, like I mentioned earlier, we live in a world where we're so often convincing ourselves that we can just do everything on our own, that we are enough, that we are self-sufficient. But I think when when we are reminded of truths like this, that everything belongs to God, that he doesn't need us, but that he chooses to work through us, I think there's really only one proper response. See, the only response really is to worship, to be in awe of his glory, and to worship the one and only self-sufficient God. And so today, as we go about our days, I want to challenge you to take some time to read through Psalm 103 so that we may offer our praise to the one who forgives our sins, redeems our lives, and rules over all.